الحمد لله الحمد لله وكفى وسلام على عباد الذين اصطفى اما بعد قال تعالى في القران المجيد والفرقان الحميد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم واذ ابتلى ابراهيم ربه بكلمات فاتمهن قال اني جاعلك للناس اماما قال ومن ذريتي قال لا ينهل احد الظالمين Sadaq Allahu Lazim. Dear respected brothers, elders, sisters, and anybody that's listening, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Inshallah, today we're going to talk about Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam. Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam has been mentioned by name 69 times in the Holy Quran. Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam is one of the most revered prophets. throughout history he is acknowledged by everybody the kufar of makka used to hold ibrahim alayhi salam in high regards they used to pride themselves that we are the descendants of prophet ibrahim alayhi salam and we are following his customs and his ways they would pride themselves by taking care of the kaaba the house that was rebuilt by prophet ibrahim alayhi salam Like that, the Jews and the Christians, they would associate themselves with Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam because the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that they believed in were descendants of Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam. So everybody had high regard for Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam. And as Muslims, alhamdulillah, we also have high regard for Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam. Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam, he was the he was the one of the most noble and one of the most high ranking prophet of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and from his child his son prophet ismail is sam that's where our prophet in from that progeny our prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam came from so we as muslim hold prophet ibrahim alaihi sam in high regard as well allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested prophet ibrahim alaihi sam throughout his prophethood and every time prophet ibrahim alayhi salam had to go through a trial a tribulation from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would order ibrahim alayhi salam aslim submit and prophet ibrahim alayhi salam would respond aslamtu li rabbil alamin i submit myself to the lord of all the world now the question is Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala test Ibrahim alayhi salam so much and put him through so much difficulties? The ulama give a few reasons. First, when a person has a relationship with somebody, the relationship when it's tested, then you see the bond between them. So every time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested Ibrahim alayhi salam Ibrahim alayhi salam submitted towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala So this was a special bond and a relationship between Allah and his beloved prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam Once our ustad he gave an example that a father loves a child and sometimes he likes You know, especially when a child is a baby so when you're holding that baby sometimes you want that child to cry because their cry is even so nice and beautiful so sometimes what well, the father does he'll pinch the baby and the baby will start crying and the noise of that crying is so beautiful so that's how allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would tease his prophet ibrahim alayhi salam only because he knew Every time he teased, he tested, he tried Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam. Every single time Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam submitted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's the first reason. The second reason is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to nurture Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam. Because prophethood is a greater responsibility. Like I mentioned many a time, 
the Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had the biggest worry and concern that how could each one of their ummati be saved from the fire of Jahannam and go into Jannah. So they would work day and night in making, in making sure that people, they submit to, towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this was nurturing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So every time he was tested, this was to get Ibrahim al Islam ready for greater tests. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he would test Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam, Allah ta'ala, when he tests a person, Allah wants success for them. Allah wants the betterment for them, both in dunya and in akhirat. And we see that every time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested Ibrahim alayhi salam, and Ibrahim alayhi salam was success, su successful in his test, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this world gave two titles to Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam. One, he was, became the Imam, the leader. And second, he became the Khalilullah, the friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was revered with these two names that he was the leader and acknowledged by everybody. And second of all, he was the friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So both in this world and then in the next world, the rewards will be great with such great prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is our many reasons why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests his beloved people. And he knows that the beloved people of his always submit to him. And the three things that we learn is that every single time that Prophet Ibrahim alayhi was tested, the three stages of his test. And this is something that we should all bring into our lives. Whenever we are going to be tested in dunya, whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to try us, whenever we are going to go through any difficult moment, we need to learn these three stages. The first is, whenever you are tested, do sabr. Be patient. Because the reward for patience is Jannah. So first and foremost, do sabr whenever you are tested. So whenever Prophet Ibrahim al-Islam, and we will talk about his tests, and whenever he was tested, he didn't mourn. He didn't complain. He got on with it. He did sabr. He knew this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He knew this was a trial, a tribulation. And the rewards will be great for this sabr that I am doing. So whenever we are tested, we should be patient. The second of all, yaqeen. Having certainty, faith, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will get me through this. So whenever you are tested, after doing sabr, have faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that everything, outcome will be good from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whatever the outcome is, is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and goodness will come from it. So have yaqeen and certainty that Allah will take care of all the affairs. Allah will look after everything. So have that yaqeen, that certainty that this test and trial is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah will get me through this trial and tribulation. And the third thing, submission. Whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested Ibrahim alayhi salam, Ibrahim alayhi salam didn't use his logic, didn't say why me or this doesn't make sense. He submitted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because it was an order. It was a command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And whenever Allah commanded him, he submitted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He didn't question why. He didn't. Try to use his logic. He knew this is what Allah wanted. This is an order, an instruction from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My job is not to question. My job is to submit. And he submitted towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these three are key points. Whenever you are tested, whenever you are going through a trial, a tribulation or a hard time, Learn from Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam. First of all, 
sabr, patience. Don't complain. This is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Second of all, yaqeen, certainty. That this trial and tribulation is from Allah ta'ala. And Allah is the one that will get me through this trial and tribulation. So have the yaqeen that all will be good. And third thing is submission. Whenever Allah has tested you, submit yourself. Bow down to Allah Ta'ala. Ask from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Don't question why. Why is it me? Why did it happen to me? Why do look at other people are better off? Why me? No. Submit. Your job is to submit to Allah Ta'ala. Allah is testing you. Allah has got something good in store for you. So your job is to submit. So three things. Sabr, Yaqeen and Submission. So. Like I said to you, because these three key elements were in Prophet Ibrahim salam, he was always successful in his test. And that's why, as a result, he got the title of Imam. He was revered by everybody. And second of all, he became the friend of Allah, the Khalil of Allah. And remember, we are all in this world to build our friendship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our job is to become a wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one that turns towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one that doesn't break off and do kati with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but the one that submits to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one that asks from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his time of need, the one that thanks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he is blessed. So our job is to become a wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And today, inshallah, we will learn many lessons from the story of Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam. Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam, when he was growing up in Babylon, Iraq, the atmosphere around him was that, that everybody around him was committing shirk. They would associate partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They would idol worship. And the strange thing was his own father, Azar, would make and carve out the idols with his own hands. And then he would sell them to the people and people would purchase them. And then they would go home and they would bow down to them and they would ask from these idols. And all this didn't make sense to Prophet Ibrahim salam, that my father is making and carving idols from his own hands and the people are perched in the idols and then they're bowing down and asking from these idols these idols don't listen these idols don't hear these idols can't help they're just stone and this wouldn't make sense to prophet ibrahim from a young age from the age of seven he would ask his father why are you submitting to these angel uh, to these idols why are you bowing down? Why are you asking from these idols? And his father would get angry. And he would say, get out before I beat you up. To such an extent, he would say, I would kill you. So, Prophet Ibrahim is mentioned in one narration that his father would give him the idols to, to deliver to the houses of the people. And what Prophet Ibrahim would do when he would have the idol, he would throw them into the river. And he would say to the idols, come on, save yourselves. If you really are gods and you claim yourself to be God, save yourself. The Prophet Ibrahim wouldn't deliver the idols. He would throw them in the river and he would question them, go on, save yourself if you really are gods. And they would drown in front of his eyes. So Prophet Ibrahim he was... He was always questioning that why people would bow themselves down, why they would worship these idols. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave Ibrahim alayhi salam the understanding, the wisdom from a very young age. And Ibrahim alayhi salam, through his wisdom, would try to explain to the people. But the people, they just wouldn't listen. 
So one day Ibrahim alayhi salam thought, I'll teach them a lesson. So the people of the community had a festival and they were all ready to go out to the festival. So Ibrahim Islam father said to Ibrahim Islam, come on, let's go. So Ibrahim Islam said, Inni Saqim, I'm not well, I'm ill. You lot go. So the people went to the festival. And what Ibrahim Islam did, he came to the place where all the idols were. And he had an axe with him. And Ibrahim went around smashing all the idols. And the big one, he left it alone. He didn't touch the big one. But instead, the axe, he put it around the neck of the big idol. So it looked like the big idol went around smashing all the small idols. And Ibrahim disappeared. So in the evening, the people, after celebrating, they thought, let's go and worship our gods. So they came to their place of worship. And to their surprise and to their horror, they saw their idols smashed into pieces. Nose here, ear there, all smashed into pieces. And they're, they're horrified by this. And they see that there's this big idol, and around the big idol, there's the axe. And the people are asking, who did this? So they said, it can only be one boy, and he's called Ibrahim. And he's the one that didn't come to the festival as well. So they summoned up Ibrahim alayhi salam. And they asked him, Anta fa'alta hadha bi aliyatina ya Ibrahim? Did you do this to our gods? So Ibrahim and some said, Why are you asking me? Ask the big one. First, aduhum in kanu yantikun. Ask him, question him if he speaks. Look, he's gone around smashing all the small ones. He's got the axe around him. Why are you, why are you asking me? Question him. And all the people responded, You know these idols don't speak. They can't move. They can't harm. Ibrahim and some wanted to hear it from their own mouth. And this is how they responded. Oh, Ibrahim, you know that they can't move. You know that they can't hear. You know that they can't go around harming. So Ibrahim and some, he responding, he responded, this is what I'm telling you. These gods that you worship, they don't hear your prayers. They don't respond to your calls. They can't benefit you. They can't harm you. So why are you worshipping them? And the people were quiet. And they realized what Ibrahim, uh, Ibrahim is saying is the truth. And they, all, they didn't have no answer. They just said, well, we saw our dads worshipping and our forefathers worshipped the idols. That's why we're worshipping the idols. So, some of them, they said, no, we should help our gods. What he's done is a big crime. Let's make a big fire and let's throw Ibrahim and Islam into this fire. And let's help our gods. So that's how the people responded, the community responded. Even though the words of Ibrahim and Islam made sense to them, they were too arrogant. To acknowledge the truth. And instead, they said, Let's help our God, let's make a big fire, and let's throw Ibrahim Islam into this fire. This is his punishment. First, his dad threatened to kill him because Ibrahim Islam would try to make him understand. Now, the community are ready to kill him because he's trying to make them understand the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and all this. Idol worship of false gods is all wrong, but they wouldn't understand. So they made a big fire, huge fire. The fire was raging for so many days. Birds couldn't even fly above this fire because it was so hot. 
People couldn't get near to this fire. It was so hot. So they had to catapult Ibrahim into this fire. So as they were catapulting Ibrahim into this fire, Ibrahim called out to Allah, Hasbunallah wa ni'mal wakil. My Allah is enough for me. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Qulna ya naru, uni bardam wa salam wa salaman ala Ibrahim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered the fire to become to become peaceful and cool for Ibrahim alayhi salam. Everything is controlled by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If Allah orders the fire to burn, it will burn. If Allah doesn't order the fire to burn, it won't burn. If Allah orders the knife to cut, it will cut. If Allah doesn't order the knife to cut, it won't cut. Everything happens by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's our yaqeen. That's the certainty we got to have. Ibrahim Islam, like I said to you, the three points. Ibrahim Islam was patient. But when he was tested, he had the certainty that Allah will save him. And he submitted himself to the way of Allah. He didn't question, he didn't have any thoughts in his mind. He knew Allah will save me. And Allah saved Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam. So, to the astonishment of the people, Ibrahim alayhi salam, he came out of the fire peacefully, without any harm. Even then, the people did not submit. They didn't believe, except for two people, his wife Sarah and his nephew, Prophet Lut So, they decided to leave Babylon, Iraq, and they decided to move on. As they were moving on, Namrud, the tyrant king, he heard the how Ibrahim al-Islam walked away from a fire. So he called him to his court and he thought he'll debate with Prophet Ibrahim al-Islam. This tyrant king, Namrud, people would worship him. He would oppress the people. He himself thought he was God. So Namrud asked him, Who do you worship? And Ibrahim responded, I worship the Lord of all the worlds. And my Lord is the one that gives life and causes death. So Namrud, being a foolish king, said, I give life and I cause death. So he called two prisoners that were facing the death penalty and he said to one of them, go, I'll let you go free. And the other one, he killed him. He goes, look, I give life and I call death. What a foolish man he was. Ibrahim alayhi salam responded, my Allah, he every day rises the sun from the east and sets in the west. You rise it from the west and set it in the east. And Namrud had no response. He was dumbstruck. He didn't have nothing to say. Because only Allah every morning rises the sun from the east. Only Allah has the power to do this. So, Nimrud realized, I better save my own self. And he ushered Ibrahim Islam out of his court. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continued to test Ibrahim salam at a place called Harran. The people there would worship the stars. So Ibrahim salam when he was when he approached these people and he saw that these people would worship the stars, look at the wisdom of Prophet Ibrahim 
Prophet Ibrahim always submitted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He always had the faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But to make the people understand, Ibrahim he will look at the stars. And these are creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But to get these people engaged, he said, this is my Lord. But when the stars vanish, Ibrahim Islam said, I don't like things that vanish. So then, later on, when he saw the moon, he said, this is my Lord. And the people started to warm up to Ibrahim Islam. And they thought he's one of them that believes in the stars and the moon. So, when the moon disappeared, he said, no, this can't be my Lord. So then, when the sun was rising, he said, Hada Rabbi, Hada Akbar, this is my Lord. This is far greater. The sun is far greater than the moon and the stars. But when the sun set, he said, no, this can't be my Lord. My Lord is the one that created all these things. These are creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look how Ibrahim salam, was teaching Tawheed, the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to these people. But the people weren't ready to listen to Prophet Ibrahim salam. Then Ibrahim al left and he went to Egypt. And in Egypt, there was another tyrant king who was a womanizer. Every beautiful woman that would enter the city, Na'uzubillah, he would commit sin with them. So then, when he got the news that Ibrahim al along with his wife Sarah and Lut al they entered the city and there's a beautiful woman that he thought, I need this woman. And what the king would do, if a husband had a beautiful wife, he would kill the husband and he would leave the wife alive and he would commit sin with her. So here Ibrahim and some told Sarah that if they ask you who I am to you, say I am your brother. And you are my sister. Because in Islam, we are all brothers and sisters. So you're not lying. So when they question what relationship are you two, so they respond to brother and sister. So anyway, the king took in Sarah. Sarah was a chaste woman, a pure woman. And she feared Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And she was a loyal wife to her husband, Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam. Chastity is an honor in Islam. For women to be chaste and pure is an honor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we see and we will carry on learning the chastity of women throughout Islam. That's how Islam always look at the chastity and always say God is the chastity of a woman. This is the honor of, of a woman. So anyway, the king, this tyrant king, he gave Sarah all kind of gold, silver, all kind of jewelry. But that did not interest Sarah. She was worried about her izzat, her honor and her respect. And she was crying, constantly crying. And the king asked, what's up? I'm giving you everything that you want, everything in the, whatever you can ask from, from the worldly aspect. But that didn't make Sarah happy. She wanted to go back to her husband. She wanted to, to protect her chastity and her honor. So what happened was this king, he fell asleep. And when he fell asleep, he had a dream that he must let Sarah go. Otherwise, his kingdom would be destroyed. And straight away he woke up and he said, you can go, you are free to go. 
And not only did he set her free, he said, here, I give you a slave girl. Her name is Hajra. You take this slave girl with you. So, Sarah was reunited with Prophet Ibrahim a.s. They lived in Egypt for several years. After living in Egypt, they moved to Jerusalem. And in Jerusalem, the age of Prophet Ibrahim a.s. reached 85 and he had no children. So Sarah said to Ibrahim a.s. Why don't you marry Hajra? And then Ibrahim a.s. got married to Hajra. At the age of 86, they had their son, Ismail a.s. Later on, inshallah, in the next series, when we talk about Ismail a.s., we will talk about the sacrifices when Ibrahim a.s. was ordered to take his son Ismail a.s. and Hajj a.s. to Mecca in a barren piece of land where nobody was there. I made them settle there. And then later on, as Ismail Islam grew up, Allah ordered Ibrahim Islam to sacrifice Ismail Islam. And again, Ismail, uh, Ibrahim Islam didn't question Allah. Well, Allah, this doesn't make sense. He did whatever Allah ordered him. Then they had the honor of rebuilding the Kaaba. And inshallah, we will talk about these things in the story of Prophet Ismail a.s. But what we learn from the story of Prophet Ibrahim a.s. is that Allah Ta'ala tested him in big ways. And every time he was tested, and we will learn more, inshallah, when we go through the series of Ismail a.s. tomorrow. When he was tested, he submitted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He didn't question Allah ta'ala. He didn't ask why. It doesn't make sense. He did whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered him to. And because of this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honored Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam and his children. From his line of progeny, from his descendants, came the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, great, great prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala came from the line of Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention, وَوَهَبْنَا لَهُ إِسْحَاقَ وَيَعْقُوبُ كُلًّا هَدَيْنَا وَنُوحًا هَدَيْنَا مِنْ قَبْلُ وَمِنْ ذُرِّيَّةِ دَعْوُودَ وَسُلَيْمَانَ وَأَيُوبَ وَيُوسَفَ وَمُوسَ وَحَارُونَ وَكَذَلِكَ نَجْزِ الْمُحْسِنِينَ Then Allah Ta'ala continues, Wa Zakariya, wa Yahya, wa Isa, wa Ilyas, kullum min as-salihin, wa Ismaila, wa Yasa'a, wa Yunusa, wa Luta, wa kullun faddalna ala al-alameen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honored Ibrahim alayhi salam. And this is a lesson to us all. Whenever we do the khidmat of deen, whenever we serve deen, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will safeguard the deen in our children and their children to come in the generation to come. And this is the biggest success that we can have, that we live this dunya with Iman, we make sure that our children are Muslims, and their children will stay Muslims, and their children will stay Muslims. Otherwise, we see in history, people that were Muslim, were their grandchildren, and that generation after that, left Islam, because the effort of deen stopped. People became complacent, People became comfortable in the dunya. But Ibrahim a.s. He made sacrifice. He made effort. He submitted towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he prayed for safeguarding of deen within his progeny. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honored his progeny with prophethood. So his descendants were the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And big, big noble prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who Allah Ta'ala gave books to, who Allah Ta'ala gave hikmat and wisdom to, and who Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala gave kingdom and authority to. And inshallah, we will talk about those great prophets of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala as we go along. Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam, he prayed 
After building the Kaaba with Qal Ibrahim Rabbi Jal Hada Balad and Amin and Warzuku Ahlau Minat Thamarati Man Amna Minhum Billahi Wal Yomin Akhir. Prophet Ibrahim Alisa Medwa, my Lord, make the city a city of peace and provide its people with fruits, those of them who believe in Allah and the last day. Prophet Ibrahim Alisa Medwa, Walla, make Makkah a fruitful city, a city of peace, a city where the people will enjoy from, from its fruits. And we see today millions of people go to Makkah and they enjoy all kind and all kind of fruit from all over the world. They arrive in Makkah and people enjoy. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted this dua. Then also Ibrahim al Sam Medwa Rabbana Wabath Fihim Rasula Minhum Yatadu Alay Mayatika wa you ali muhum al kitabu wal hikma wa you zakihim in the kantal aziz al hakim. And our Lord Raise in their midst a messenger from amongst them who should recite to them their, your verses and teach them the book and the wisdom and cleanse them of all impurities. Indeed, you and you alone are the Almighty and the All Wise. And this was in reference to our beloved Prophet Muhammad, وسلم, who was the descendant of Prophet Ismail, السلام, who was the son of Prophet Ibrahim. السلام. So, Look at the honor Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to Ibrahim alayhi salam. From his lineage, from his progeny came a whole list of prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But also the last and final prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And remember, everybody takes pride and wants to associate themselves with Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam. But Prophet Ibrahim Islam taught the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we only worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Kuffar of Makkah who revered themselves and would associate themselves with Ibrahim Islam, they started to do kufr and associate with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they started to do shirk. So they fell away from the teachings of Ibrahim Islam. And we see today the Christians and the Jews who honor themselves with association with Prophet Ibrahim Islam, unfortunately, they also do shirk and they associate partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had a child, had a son in the name of Isa alayhi salam and in the name of Uzair alayhi salam. This is what the Jews and the Christians say. These were not the teachings of Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam, the teaching of Ibrahim alayhi salam with the teaching that we worship only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and these were the teaching of Ibrahim alayhi salam, his son Ismail alayhi salam, his other son Isaac alayhi salam, and all the noble prophets that all came they all taught the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's why alhamdulillah we as Muslims we are the true followers of Ibrahim alayhi salam, the Abrahamic way and we can hold on to this title and this honor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because we only worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ibrahim alayhi faced challenges. He smashed the idols. He he broke the idols. He took people away from shirk and brought them to the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He taught people not to worship astronomy into stars and the sun and the moon. But these are creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He taught the people that whenever you are facing the kings, whenever you are facing a challenge, that you step up and you explain with wisdom, with hikmat, the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the power to do each and everything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had the power to save Ibrahim al-Islam from the fire. Fire quality is to burn. But Allah ta'ala didn't, he took out the quality of burning from that fire and ordered the fire to be cool and welcome into Ibrahim Islam. Everything is in control of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is that certainty and yaqeen we need to bring in our hearts. If we can bring that certainty and yaqeen, then we will be successful in this dunya, we will be successful in the next world. And inshallah, we will also talk tomorrow inshallah about Ibrahim Islam and his sacrifices. 
He was ready to sacrifice his son Ismail alayhi salam for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's another great story which again the mind can't comprehend. You know, a bond of father and a son is is so together, is so united that you know a father can never think that he can slaughter his son. But because it was what Allah ordered, what Allah wanted, Ibrahim and Islam to him, son was secondary. Only Allah was first. Whatever Allah ordered him, that has to be done. This is true submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When it's time to pray namaz and we're busy with other things, submit, leave everything, put everything to one side and turn towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When it's time to serve your parents, leave your friends and go and serve your parents because this is what Allah wants. So do those actions that please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the true submission, the submission of Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam, which earned him the titles of Imam and Khalilullah, the true friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he makes us a true friend. Ameen. Ya Rabbil Alameen. Wa akhru dawana. Anilhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen.